All right, this topic continues to come up over and over again. There's so many ways to look at it, so many different uh, variables in it. But let's talk some more about cholesterol. And so specifically, let's talk about um, remnant cholesterol. Now, most people, if they have a total cholesterol over 190 milligrams per deciliter, they're going to be told, hey, you need to go on a statin to prevent, prevent a heart attack. Elevated LDL cholesterol is the so-called bad cholesterol, and this, this will get you medicated uh, if, it's, if it's higher than, than over a certain threshold. Now, a lot of people are now talking about something called APOB, which is different sort of metric, but it, it tends to run in the same direction as LDL. So if your LDL is elevated, likely your APOB is going to be elevated. There's some level of discordance there, things like insulin resistance or sensitivities can modify it to some degree, but generally if you have a really high LDL cholesterol, you're likely to have fairly high APOB. So we're not gonna talk about it in this video, we're gonna focus on remnant uh, cholesterol and some of the new research that's out there. So for you guys who don't know, I'm Dr. Sean Baker. And first of all, what is remnant cholesterol? Well, it is basically, there's a formula for it, it's basically your total cholesterol minus your HDL cholesterol and minus your LDL cholesterol. So if your total cholesterol is 200 and your LDL cholesterol is 100 and your uh, HDL is 50, then your remnant cholesterol would then be 50, right? What do we know about it? So in, in the December 2020 Journal of the American College of Cardiology, they published a paper explaining uh, that remnant cholesterol and not LDL was what caused heart disease, at least in that particular study. They found that also triglycerides uh, which are fats being transported in the blood, which were also associated with cardiovascular disease. And LDL and HDL in that particular paper were not associated with heart disease. Now, there's a September 2022 study in the Frontiers of Cardiovascular Medicine that published similar findings after studying nearly 20,000 people, uh, adults in the United States. Now, elevated remnant cholesterol, once again, was associated with cardiovascular mortalities independent of these other traditional risk factors. Now, what can you do about it? Well, and how do you, how do you adjust it? Well, uh, a lower carb, higher fat diet uh, does have an impact uh, on this. And so an article in the July 2022 uh, Journal of Cardiovascular Diabetology found that ketosis that resulted from a low carbohydrate, higher fat diet led to a significant reduction in circulating levels of remnant cholesterol and triglycerides. Now, what are the typical recommendations uh, that tell you to replace saturated fats in the diets with uh, either other fat sources or often carbohydrates? So a January 2000 article in Prevention Cardiology found that a diet higher in carbohydrates, that is 60% of calories, and lower in saturated fats raised both triglycerides and remnant cholesterol while lowering the so-called healthy HDL. Now the research has concluded that it seems appropriate to question the wisdom recommending that all Americans should replace dietary saturated fat with carbohydrates. Now, why then 23 years later do we still have recommendations to cut saturated fats and eat lots of carbohydrates? Now currently the US guidelines recommend less than 10% of our calories come from saturated fats and 45 to 6% of our calories are coming from carbohydrates. Now this is exactly the ratio that that 2000 article in, Preve in, in Prevention Cardiology found was the best for actually promoting heart disease. So it makes you kind of wonder. So if you wanted to know why so many people are so unhealthy, you know, maybe maybe uh, we need to update our, our recommendations because it doesn't seem to be working out. So what do you, what do I think you should eat? Well, you know, obviously I'm going to say steak, meat, you know, things like that. Those are, those are great sources of nutrition. Uh, if you want to add some sort of non-starchy vegetable or some low carb uh, uh, fruit like berries, you may do well with that as well, depending on how you tolerate things. But let me know, are you surprised that we found this back in 2000 and we still have guidelines telling us to eat in a way that may be promoting heart disease? You know, heart disease has gone up. Uh, meat, meat consumption, uh, particularly well, beef consumption in particular, has gone down significantly over the last 50 years. And certainly our consumption of animal fats, if we look at over a period of you know, a century, has gone down tremendously and chronic disease continues to go up, up, up and up. And something's wrong. Something we're doing is wrong. So anyway, I don't think it's eating meat. Uh, let me know what you guys think. We'll talk to you soon.